So here we are in early February, and I just wanted to show you what effect last summer's drought has had on the rhododendrons here in the garden and what perhaps we can do about it. And we're looking here at a, a lovely rhododendron loderi, and most of it looks in good condition. But when we look more closely, uh, this whole branch here has, has died. And why is that? And I think it's something we're seeing in quite a number of rhododendrons of this sort of size where they're reacting to stress. They've overseeded as a result of the drought and the plant is saying, I just don't have the energy to support all my branches. And this is a common theme which we'll look at here and there, but the only thing to do here is just to uh, remove this dead branch, which looks unsightly, and you can see that the dieback has gone right back to the main stem. In smaller species rhododendrons, we're seeing the same problem, although it's only showed up recently and wasn't perhaps evident after the drought in September last year. You can see we've got enormous dieback on this plant, but still a bit of good healthy growth from in the bottom. So the only thing to do here is to cut out the main uh, nearly dead growth right back, right back to the few decent shoots that are left. That reduces the stress on the plant dramatically. It still may not survive, but it's now got a reasonable chance. It looks brutal, it, has, it is brutal, but that's the only way of stopping the whole plant being dead in the next three or four months. And if we look down here at a line of scented rhododendron fragrantissimums, you can see that the bottom plant here has quite obviously had it and probably that's because it was just that bit drier just catching that bit more sun than its neighbours slightly further up the path. That plant will be dead uh, in a week or two or in a month or two there's no point trying to save it um, one might as well give up on it now and when I pull it up you'll see that it's hardly got a root structure and a lot of its roots are looking pretty dead and I'm afraid it joins a scrap heap and one simply has to start again here with something new later on. So here we've got another drought struck rhododendron, this time uh, an arboreum seedling uh, which would eventually have grown into a large shrub. Um, this is about 10 years from planting and prior to the drought it was looking very healthy. It didn't put on any new growth and we're left with something which I'm afraid there's very little we can do about. Um, perhaps if we'd watered this plant last summer it might have survived but as it is it's, it's what we call hanging in there. But I can tell you for free that it will be dead before long and we just as well pull this out and start again because I'm afraid it's it's had it there's nothing we can do again it looked fine last autumn um, until some of the old leaves fell off uh, and now it's struggling perhaps we'll give it the benefit of the doubt for a day or two but I fear the outcome is pretty clear so here's another sort of rhododendron drought problem um, in a young rhododendron Sinagrandi which was planted out about three or four years ago and you can see the obvious chlorosis or yellowing in the leaves. Um, in a normal year you might think that that was some sort of mineral deficiency which yellowing of the leaves in camellias usually means but here I, I'm convinced that this is just the starvation factor of drought. This rhododendron had frankly, fr thankfully put on its new growth before the drought took a hold. Then it had its new growth and 
basically it didn't get enough nutrition up to these leaves and they responded by going yellow. Will the plant die? No, it should be fine. Uh, should we give it a good rich mulch of leaf mould and dung or something like that? Yes, we probably should because um, that'll give it a bit more nutrition so that the next set of leaves it puts on later this summer uh, they should be nice and green without this horrid yellow in it. It's a problem but not a terminal one in this case. So here we're looking at a 40, 30 to 40 year old Rhododendron Calophytum. It's not looking very well, its leaves are drooping down which might have been a sign of frost if we'd had any frost for the last six weeks. Odd bits of dead showing up here and there. Um, dead twigs, dead small dead branches. Uh, clearly there's some flower buds coming. But is this plant sick? Yes, it's sick. Will it survive? Time will tell. I would say it's in the borderline category. And again, unfortunately, entirely the effects of the drought last summer. Although this plant is in considerable shade, its root system would come out several feet from below it and it would have been dry as an old boot here at the top of the garden. Uh, here we see a rhododendron, uh, uh, one, one, a royal flush hybrid. Here you see a plant actually fighting back against the drought. And you can see that this top branch here is now going dead and the, the leaves are withered up. But if you look closely on the stem, you can see that the new shoots are already coming from the central branch. The plant suffered in the, in the summer but has had the strength and energy, because it's quite a young plant, to regenerate itself and we can assist the process by cutting out the piece of dead and when you look the rest of the rest of the plant is fine but there's another another problem in the nearby plant where again again there's a piece of of dead near the top and a nice little shoot peeping out to greet us very simple way of ensuring the survival of the plant. We don't want that rot going back down the stem and we just take a minute or two to sort out a problem which our garden visitors won't now notice and nature's cracked the problem here. So this is Rhododendron morii, uh, uh, not a terribly well-known species but very attractive white flowers with dots in the trumpets. Uh, it's a fairly mature plant as you can see. It grossly overseeded as a response to the drought and feeling threatened. You see seed pods everywhere and frankly it's not looking very healthy. Uh, dead branch or two over there to cut out which have completely died after seeding last autumn. Uh, one or two branches looking bit healthier than others um, but basically what the drought has done is probably knock 10 years off the life of this rhododendron. Um, it'll go on for a year or two more with a bit of pruning out of the dead but basically it's coming to the end of its natural life and what last summer's drought did was speed that up. The scented rhododendrons took possibly the biggest battering in the drought because they, their new growth hadn't quite come out. They're flowering in May and June and therefore they were later into the new growth than other earlier flowering rhododendrons. And here we're looking at Countess of Haddington, a fairly mature uh, clump which probably would live 25 or 30 years in our high rainfall environment. But again you can see the effects of the drought has been to kill off some of the upper branches. And unlike the rhododendron royal flush that we were looking at earlier, this particular one, rhododendron, doesn't, doesn't reshoot. Um, 
Some rhododendrons you can cut down and they'll reshoot and some won't. Generally those with smooth bark won't. So again, the drought has speeded up the uh, demise or ultimate demise of this clump. And we need to get on and think about planting some new ones because this has maybe got a couple of years to go and no more. Probably the worst problem of all is where the big leaf rhododendron youngsters were in too hot a place. And you can see here that this plant has struggled. It only had the tiny bit of new growth last year and very small leaves. The lower branches are in the main dead and need chopping off. And they've died right back to the main stem. You can see some buds are shooting lower down, which may, may be a very good sign. But this plant too needs a good, a good mulching. Um, and we just have to hope for a wetter summer than we had last year. But all is not uh, lost in this clearing. This plant caught more sun than the others. But if we just pause a moment and look at some of these other plants, which had more shade, they're looking appreciably better. Substantial amount of new growth. Um, the leaves are only about half the proper size, but this plant will survive. The one next to it's under even more stress, but there's hope for that too. And I suppose the moral of the story is that these big leaf rhododendrons need to be grown in partial shade in a damp spot, or you've simply got to bite the bullet and bring a can or two of water to them, which is why we've been setting up uh, roof water collecting stations around the garden so we don't have to carry the water so far next summer if drought strikes again. So I'm standing between uh, two plants of a rather obscure rhododendron called Rhododendron Heliolepsis. Both plants um, were planted about 12 or 15 years ago and until about uh, three weeks ago both were looking pretty healthy. Uh, the leaves are a, a bit inverted and hanging down on this one but plenty of flower bud, plenty of uh, energy in the plant and looking healthy but next door suddenly we see the leaves have completely inverted and the, the flower buds and the new growth buds are beginning to brown off. It's already apparent to me that this is um, going to be dead in a, in a week or two. Uh, you can see the darkening on the stems there, which means that you know there are no xylem and phloem is is not flowing up and down the stem, and that is about to go black, and then the leaves will drop off and the plant will be dead. Um, if this had happened in May, June, or in the summer, one would have feared that there'd been a honey fungus outbreak, which had affected the roots, and the honey fungus had somehow got to the base of the, of the rhododendron, but at this time of the year I think honey fungus is an unlikely culprit and I'm afraid this is a hot spot and this is just another effect of last summer's drought which has taken six or eight months to come to fruition. Anyway, we're quite lucky the one, one good survivor is left to us. We talked about the drought hastening the end of elderly clumps of rhododendrons and here's a classic example of two very mature, probably 60 year old plants. Uh, they were in shade but a couple of huge beech trees have fallen down so they caught the full effects of the drought and the full effects of the scorching sun last summer. You can see the leaf, leaf droop which has only become apparent in the last two or three weeks. And you can see the leaf droop also in the second plant above me. Uh, we have to accept that both are now dead and need to be cut down and, and dug out. 
and there's nothing we can do to save them. But if you've gained the impression that everything is doom and gloom in the world of rhododendrons, I would beg to differ. 95% um, of the rhododendrons in the garden are absolutely fine, um, but there are casualties in very old and very young plants. As ever, the weakest will not survive something as dramatic as the drought of last summer. But don't worry, our nursery beds are absolutely stocked full with nice young plants to come out and replace them, and that's what we'll be doing in the next three or four weeks.